the kitchen I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya what? what else is this if not love make massive moves with stars at Make massive moves. The space race has already started. Russia had got the first object in space. The coast is as wild today as it was when Europeans settled the continent. Enormous beasts with enormous thirst. The teens are primed and ready. They got the first animal in space and they got the first person. Time to see what the boys can do. Make massive moves with Starsight. Make massive moves. Isn't that your uh, daughter's bib? But the truth is, I feel like Arabella's always with me. Don't you ever forget this man's face. He killed your brother. <laughs> Make massive moves with Starsight. Sanbonani in the Madeguane. Good evening. Oh, welcome to Vanishing Cultures, the show that dares to talk about our ever changing African cultures in modern day society. Eka malamos piwaram jali ang hambingeto. 
ngamba nesi pala pala sentombe. Ripere ili amukela, Governation Couches. And today again, it's going to be an exciting day. We're going to unpack a very interesting topic. Yes. Before we get onto that topic, I want to say thank you uh, for everyone just to be patient with us. It's this thing also after the sauna, I want to be sitting into double with your president to cool man. I think one thing I mean, I would see pega cool into your president again. This is GBV thing. I don't think people understand. Maskulman a pandemic that has been a big pandemic. Elogi corner lies South Africa. Mau Baba. Ubaba wengan, opin the foot willimaz a leung gun, and the opin the foot willimaz a umgako. What does that say about you or to you? We're supposed to be providers and protectors. Hm? And instead, say Babula Labomam. I mean, what's your scene, love? Yeah, Spirit. I mean, a lot of us are struggling to understand that uh, concept. I mean, it's mm. very difficult for women out there, for children out there. And I mean, uh, we need to talk about such things. It definitely is to be spoken about. And I think also, we've done too much talking. People mm. must just be told that they need to stop. Absolutely. Like, isn't the good sense to to a point where I want Basu to go Guys, before I start, I'm sure my good sense is to scare the nonsense. Like, before we introduce, let me just remind you guys what we all need to do to make sure good the pandemic is not going like it's in terms of coronavirus. Good sense, we must social discount, and then we must be uh, one kg away from each other, and then they say you must watch for two hours. Am I right? No, 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 no. That's how you get killed. Oh. <laughs> All the stuff of the above that you mentioned, that is how you're going to die. Are you serious? Yeah, no, no. You must sanitize, Baba. Yes. Or alternatively, wash your hands. Right. Water will, and soap will be fine, you know? And so, then, no, one meter. Oh, not one kg. One kg, what is. <laughs> <laughs> no. On the topic today, guys, we're talking about um, a spouse. Does your spouse have control over your body? You know, this whole thing you're with Samato, Tanchele, with Nkogi, Ninga Kogi. And it's not just Amato Tanabomama. Hence, we say, does your spouse have control on your body? As Hambi Soto, Samano, I'm Caroline. ZMB and Jafo. Welcome to Venetian Cultures. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be here. Thank you so, so much for taking the time and yes. for sharing. We really appreciate, we really appreciate that. We, it's a pleasure. We know how hard it is for people to come and meet with other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So well, it's I, a pleasure to be here. It's, a, it's an important topic for an important time. True. Absolutely. Mm. So, okay, we'll start off very light. You know, <laughs> we don't want to lose our viewers here. <laughs> we'll start off very light. We we'll just want to ask you first, just to highlight us a bit about, about who yourself, you are. Yes. About yourself, just briefly. Um, well, my name is Caroline Zoakim Bingifo, and I'm a mother, a wife. She started with the wife first. I'm a wife, a mother, <laughs> I'm a child of God, I am a businesswoman, an executive, but beyond all what I do is that I'm a transformational agent. Mm -hmm. I like to impact life, influence lives, and just build people up for a better living. Wow, I hope a lot of people get influenced wow. by what you have to say. First, you know? <laughs> I'm about to say, what don't you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many things. <laughs> yeah, so we want to be true to the topic. As we said, we're talking about does your spouse on your body? So I'll just touch off on a light question. I mean, for you, just if you could tell us, what is your definition of a healthy relationship? Well, a healthy, I mean, I think, I think it start for, starts off with what you believe in. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people go into relationships not on knowing their own personal beliefs and values and what they stand for and what they don't. And so they, f they find people that they're not necessarily, what's the word, they don't share the same beliefs and values. Mm. And therefore friction starts at the very beginning. But I think it starts off what you believe in because for me, a relationship, especially if we talk in the context of a marriage, mm -hmm. is very different from a context of dating yeah. and um, any other relationship. Marriage is very, it's, it's, it's special, it's unique yes. in its very disposition. It's yeah. not something that it's the same as when you're dating a guy, you can mm. go to your house, he can go to his <laughs> house or any. Mm. But when you're married, mm -hmm. when you have challenges, mm -hmm. you go under the same roof yes. and even worse, on the same bed. <laughs> so, so there is no separation. So the dynamics of that is quite different. And so if we're talking about a marital relationship, for a good relationship, it has to be based on utmost trust mm -hmm. and love and respect mm -hmm. and and understanding would you say that maybe then perhaps if you look at uh, people getting married is there a right time to get married do you think people should not get married too soon taking into account when you said people should know each other you know first because you can only trust somebody that you know yes 
I, I don't think there's a right or wrong time. Yeah. I, I do think age-wise, um, a parent or friend or close guardian is best place to nurture and guide a young girl or a young man mm. right. about making those decisions. I don't think there's necessarily right or wrong age. I do think that there's a certain age that you're probably not quite versed with wh who you are, mm -hmm. what you want. You might mm -hmm. think you know, but you, mm. you're not quite sure. Yeah. I think sometimes your hormones get the best of you and, sure. and while you think you're making the right decision, you're just, your body is aching for something else, right? True. Yeah, so I think it's, it's useful to get guidance, but I don't think there's a right or wrong age in itself. I yes. think it's based on character, yes. uh, based on the disposition that you are able to give of yourself and care for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Once you have that understanding, because marriage is not just All taking. All romantic. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I'm glad that you said that, because if you look at the narrative of Romeo and Juliet, it's this romantic thing, and I'll die for you, you'll die for me. Mm. You know, I mean, so having said that, what are the dangers, do you think, is it, with that kind of thinking? Well, the, the truth about marriage is that you should be able to die for each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the bottom line. That, that, you see, marriage, based on how I believe, mm -hmm. is that you should be able to die for one another. Right. We, we, we know that we live in a world that, as I, I, like, I like your show, right, Vanishing Cultures. Yes. That a lot of cultures have yes. vanished. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to, we need to um, be agents of restoration of the good stuff. Correct. What was good foundational values of our culture yes. and our beliefs, we need to be able to restore that. So I, I do think that a marriage that is well grounded on building up each other and build something that is bigger than yourself or himself Correct. should be able to really stand in the gap for each other as if they are one, because that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. I just want uh, uh, to, to, to get in there and just find out, uh, 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 since, we, like I said, we're talking about does your, does your spouse control. At, at a certain age, I think from 40 upwards, some women uh, reach uh, menopause and some men don't understand and they want what they want and they don't understand what is happening. How would you, how would you give I mean, how would you give advice for those guys who are not even patient to understand what that is about? Because they've got this thing that like, you are my wife, you are my body, you do what I want. Yeah, I mean, I, I would give an example, right? If your right hand is in pain, mm. if you injure your right hand, you can't sleep on it, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So your left hand does a little bit more work. That's true. Is that true? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm expecting you to go on and yeah. you just like... <laughs> I mean, she was just dynamite thing. Just like, you know? So that's it. That's it. If the right hand is... So you, it will take time to do some rehab on the right hand, mm -hmm. to treat it, mm -hmm. to get some understanding, get that hand. It, it's a collaborative thing. It's one body. Mm -hmm. But the one hand cannot beat up the sun and say, you know what, please function quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This hand has to be patient and wow. considerate. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you, as an African woman, you know, like we said, this is vanishing cultures. We yes. want to uh, look at perhaps is there anything that we are losing in our culture. Would you say that in marriage these days, do you see a bit of our Africanism being represented in marriage and how we are taught to be in a, in a marital kind of situation? Do you think also, two things I ask you. Mm -hmm that perhaps our culture can be a bit oppressive when it comes to women? Mm. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's a matter of our culture. Yeah. I, I really think if you look back at real traditional deep African culture, mm -hmm. there was a grounding and respect for women. Yes. I think it's over time with um, dilution and capitalism and mm -hmm. a lot of things have crept in. Because I think we make that excuse in mm -hmm. traditional meetings, right, mm -hmm. as if abuse is part of an African culture. It yes. isn't. In fact, if we remember African culture, the men that used to hit their women were regarded as very base level men. I'm glad that you bring that up because I mean, we cannot talk about such yeah. things and not tackle them. Definitely. That one, you know, African culture I find is very strict when it comes to those yes. things. And you're right with dilution and all of these excuses about, yeah. oh no, I'm a man, I must do this. So I'm, I'm glad that you bring that up. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an excuse, as mm -hmm. you say. It's not, an, because in, in the very inherent nature of an African culture is respect. Yes. It's respect for the womb mm. yes. that carries children, for a woman that births things. Mm -hmm. And that is biblical. Yes. So it is dilution that brings in this 
notion that a woman is a subject. Yes. That's not African. We must reject and uh, yeah, and discard it actually. But religiously. Yeah. Does it does does your body belong to your spouse religiously? I religiously, just... the body is one. Because <laughs> <laughs> like I explained. Because you're both men. Yeah, no. <laughs> religiously, the Bible says the two shall become one. one. Mm -hmm. But you can, and that's where understanding comes from. Mm. When you are sick as a being, one being, right? You don't. Do you force yourself to get out of bed when you're really sick? You understand it. The Bible says a man should treat the wife with understanding. Mm. So I think what we're missing in society is understanding. Wow. You know, with you, I think we need a whole <laughs> show with you. It's just that. I agree. With I you, agree. We need a, you're still going to have to come back. I just, look, I, I, it's just a pity because of time. And I just, I really need to sit down. I need to sit down with you. I want yeah. to learn a lot. Why do you women shout at us so much? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's a good point. I, I don't, I think women, women that haven't harnessed how to manage their emotions. Mm tend to use it in the, in the way of shouting. Because I think we are brought up to think that, first of all, we see that done, yes. we perpetrate it. And we think that the more we shout, the better we get our message across. Mm. Mm. The hot flashes, the, the hot flashes that we don't understand. <laughs> it's middle of winter, it's, it's, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, sure. hey, Mom Caroline is burning. <laughs> Well, I mean, I always say men don't have children. Mm. Yes. You never have to go through hormonal problems. <laughs> so, of course, you will not understand. A woman in her life cycle changes in, at several stages. When she's young, she's menstruating. That's another hormonal confusion. Mm. <laughs> when she gets past that, she gets pregnant. They pump her with other hormonal stuff so the baby is healthy. Mm -hmm. When she gets past that. So we go through all these hormonal changes. That changes characters behavior, let me not say character, as well. Yeah. So again, understanding requires that the body, the two that has become one, one. work together mm -hmm. to understand that, okay, this right hand is going through physio. Mm. Hey. I love this. <laughs> and this, this left hand needs to nurse the right hand going through physio. Until the right hand is rehabilitated, then we are one body again. All right, in closing, Ms. Um, <laughs> Caroline, I see. I shouldn't even be here. I see you guys are kicking me out. <laughs> I feel like I'm back at school. No, no we respect you. No, yeah, don't worry. We still need yeah, you. Yeah, respect me. We need you. We need, we need you. you. We need we, you. We can't be woman without a man. Yeah. So the body doesn't belong to your spouse? The body doesn't belong. The body belongs to us. So it does belong, but it doesn't belong. No, it's a shared body. Your body is mine. My, your body... Uh, my body is his. Yeah. So my husband's body is mine. My body is his. So we, we live in understanding. It's one it's a body. It's symbiotic relationship. Oh, thank you. you. Know? That's the word. Symbiotic. Yeah. Mm. See? That's it. That's it. This is Venetian <laughs> Cultures. That's Caroline ZMB. <laughs> Four. Guys, I think she'll have to come back. What do yes. you say? Speak to us on Facebook, guys. This is Venetian Cultures. Yo, we missed you guys so much. Let's go to a break. We're coming back with another expert who talks about the same thing we're talking does the body belong to your spouse promise majanga coming up after this thank, thank you so much <laughs> make massive moves so from the theater stage to the kitchen i'm anxiously awaiting to see sanaya voilà. what else is this if not love Make massive moves with Starsight. Make massive moves. The space race has already started. Russia had got the first object into space. The coast is as wild today as it was when Europeans settled the continent. Enormous beasts with enormous thirst. The teens are primed and ready. They got the first animal into space and they've got the first person. Time to see what the boys can do. Make messy moves with Starsight. Make massive moves. Isn't that your uh, daughter's bib? But the truth is, I feel like Arabella's always with me. Don't you ever forget this man's face. He killed your brother. Don't shoot. Please don't shoot. Don't shoot. Make messy moves with Starsight.
Welcome back to Vanishing Cultures. And of course, this is the right channel for you to watch. We are carrying on with our very important topic today. Does your body belong to your spouse? I know a lot of you want to say a lot when it comes to this topic. We have been getting a lot of messages out there yes. from our social media pages. People want to know what do you think. I want to know what other people think. So today joining us in studio is a very, <laughs> <laughs> very, very interesting guest. Yes. We've got Ndate uh, Promise Majanga. Sir, I just want to Nkhalinda Bin. Uh, just before Nkhalinda Bin, please tell us more about yourself, where you come from, what you do. All right, uh, my name is Promise Majanga. I come from Kempton Park in Lokem Park. Uh, I'm a technician by professional. I do appliances. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, like we say, does your does does your body belong to your spouse? You know, Tina, uh, uh, especially I'll say African men, because I am an African. You know, we've got this thing with some fans, me like Koge Ranja. What's your take on that? Uh, and uh, especially because uh, we've got this thing with some tum tole le emapadi na Koge la mapam shorts, umuntu mapam shorts. All of a sudden, I'm shatter. Mau figent lini, so I'm shint. What is your take on that, sir? All right, um, first of all, what I can say, the body of your spouse, mm. it belongs to you. Mm. Was whatever your spouse mm. wear or whatever, it belongs to you, was it she present you? Mm. Mm. She give you a good image mm. wherever she's going. People, they can judge you because of your spouse. Mm. Mm. So you need to control the body of your spouse. So yeah. it, it's your, basically it's your body. Yes, that's definitely. Once you take her, mm. or once your heart takes a, a man, a husband, the same time the body becomes one. Mm. So if it, the body belongs to you, you can't allow your woman to wear something which you must show to other men. Then that means it's no longer your body. It belongs to everyone. Mm. So I want to ask you there. Mr. Machanga, that does that apply to you too? That means that your wife can tell you not to wear <laughs> vests or muscles, you know? Showing muscles out there. Definitely. She's allowed you to do that. Mm. Was if you go to gym, you are gymming for your body to look nice, mm -hmm. not to each and everybody, like you are advertising. Mm. You know these days, there is other girls which you can propose a man. Mm. So if mm. they see a six pack mm. or whatever, they say, yeah, wow, me, I need a woman, a man mm. with a six pack. Mm. Definitely your wife, if she allows you to go and advertise yourself, she's losing you. Because mm. somebody can also grab from it. So the body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to your wife. What if she say, no, don't wear this? Mm. Yeah. Definitely you need to listen. If you have questions, say why. She mm. must just explain something which she must make you to understand why. Mm. Then mm. because you as the same body, so definitely. You, so you're saying you that say in the yes. same way that you uh, want to impose that power or in, tell your wife what to wear, you will accept the same uh, instruction as to say, Absolutely. today we're no longer wearing those shorts. We're no longer going to take out those calves. We are strictly <laughs> just long jeans and suits. <laughs> yes. I have to, because if I'm wearing nicely, mm. and my wife, she's happy, and I must also tell my wife to wear something which I must be also happy, because I don't want to marry a knife instead of, ma of marrying a, a wife. <laughs> yes. You know? When you marry a knife, she wear whatever she wants. She don't even listen to you. Then what is marriage for? Mm. You, are, you are not belong together. You mm. separate already. Mm. Yes. So wives, they must know how to listen to their men mm. so that they must not take them out. They must take them in to their house. Mm. Mm? <laughs> because if you wear something like a bum shot, the way he said, mm. at first I saw a bum shot. Mm. There was a something which I was attracted with. Mm -hmm. So the thing which I was attracted with, if she is continuing wearing that same bum shot, there will be somebody also who will see the same thing. Then it will be a fight or a competition. So it's like a stop oh, nonsense yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, you must stop. You are grown up. You must no longer sell uh, your, your body. Because the bo uh, I mean, the clothes itself, mm. it will always talk. Mm. If you just wear something on the street, that clothes, it talks. 
Mm. It's when people they can just judge a person because of the clothes itself. Mm. My brother, mm. I, I, because of time, and, and, and it's purely because of time, because uh, we had to listen to our president, because of time, I just want to, you, you to just uh, close it for me by just making me understand that who determines mm. that you have a right to tell your spouse what and what not to wear? All right. This thing, it is started from the beginning. Which beginning? Bible or African? Because yeah. I always say uh, we as African people sometimes have our own beginning and then oh. religious uh, starts oh, so. after Christ or before Christ. But this, remember, we're going to feel long before oh. figure out Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. So there are some things that when you ask people questions, they want to know, oh, is it an African way or is it a biblical way? Okay. I'll answer you like this. Mm. Let me start with the, uh, the Christian way. Mm. In the Bible, they said if a woman, she respect herself, she respect her body, mm. she's not allowed to show those things, uh, uh, whatever negativeness on her own. Meaning to say the Bible is against the wearing something rubbish on the street. All right. Now, if it comes to our culture, you can even just go down, down. We, we were not having clothes. <laughs> Do you okay. remember? Yes. We are not having clothes. Mm. What we were wearing, men's, they would just wear a into an Amazon by, by Faga yeah. Silana in yeah. the, So a, I just want to. A man was just covering here. Yes. Look at the woman. Where they just cover here. The they were covering <laughs> almost a pound. <laughs> right. Meaning to say this thing, it started from <coughs> somewhere down, down. They know the woman must wear like this. Yes. The man must just wear like this. Wow. Yes. So mm. there's just one thing. I just want to. I just want us to go through this biblical mm. context together, right. very right. briefly. Right. Mm. Uh, this is taken from Ephesians chapter five, mm. verse thirty-one. Right. Mm. It says, "A man mm. shall leave his father and his mother." Mm. Mm. Right. To be joined with his wife, and the two are intertwined into one. Mm. But uh, our mothers sometimes have a big role in who we marry, judging by just how they look, mm. right or wrong. Mm. And if your mother sometimes tells you not to marry somebody, how much of an influence does that play into then what you're saying? Because some men, believe it or not, still married, they still go mm. back and consult <laughs> with mama. <laughs> Mama's boys. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You see, those mama's boys. Mm. Yeah, uh, on that, I just want to say, if your mother or your father say you must not marry this woman or whatever they are, like enter in your, in your marriage, it must be something which they see that maybe one of you, you are not good. Mm. So them, they must come and tell you exactly the reason why they are saying so. So you well, don't, then, you then don't think physical appearances alone is enough. It has to be more than that. Is that what you're saying, if I yes. understand you correctly? Yes. Your mother chooses, or you choose? Hmm? You must choose, because you must follow your heart. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you much so for much, the time. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, but it's going to be Yeah. COVID. COVID. Yes. Guys, thank you. We're still here. We're coming back with Mona Santunia. Guys. Remember, we are live on Facebook. Talk about this issue. You know, you look at it and you're thinking deadly life, but this thing affects us for the rest of our lives. Does your spouse control your body? It starts there. We'll be back. Moves. So from the theater stage to the kitchen. I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya. What? What else is this if not love? Make massive moves with Starside.
make massive moves. The space race has already started. Russia had got the first object into space. The coast is as wild today as it was when Europeans settled the continent. Enormous beasts with enormous thirst. The teens are primed and ready. They got the first animal into space and they've got the first person. Time to see what the boys can do. Make massive moves with Starsight. Make massive moves. Isn't that your uh, daughter's bib? But the truth is, I feel like Arabella's always with me. Don't you ever forget this man's face. He killed your brother. Make massive moves with Starsight. You're still with us. It's Vanishing Cultures right here on Galaxy Universal Network. Ish, it's still fresh. Yo. It's, the, it's the new year, it's still fresh. We're still talking about does your spouse control your body? You know, I think, uh, like Ganesh, I mean, people sometimes take it for granted to, to think that no, because, oh, I'm, and it's what happens. Yes. That Loami thing. That possessiveness. It's possessiveness. I think it's the one in Auguste step. Yeah, perhaps it's the interpretation mm. of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But then again, that's why we have guests here to help us deconstruct As everything. This is a good thing at the long time. Okay, some of us are Umonasa and Tunya. Baba, welcome to Vanishing Cultures. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am Manosa and Tunya, a PhD student uh, at Vits University. I also lecture and I'm interested in gender studies and the ways in which gender has changed over time. Interesting. Mm. You could study that? Yeah. You <laughs> I think a lot of men need to study that. I think you need to take a few men with you and women. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and women. <laughs> Let's not be discriminatory. <laughs> So uh, when I, uh, do you uh, 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 do you think that your spouse controls or does does, that, does the spouse have a right to control your body? Uh, well, of course. I mean, we live, let's say, in South African and democratic society, so <laughs> people would have different beliefs, etc. So they would want to subscribe to those. But I think, in terms of how society is changing, we would say that a lot of the times when we think of the notion of a spouse controlling another person's body. It's always been based on what we call a patriarchal society, mm -hmm. right, where the man controls the body of the woman. And okay. of course, our recent history, uh, which is a feminist history, has come with women saying that we can actually not allow ourselves to be subjugated by men because we also have rights. We also have the right to express ourselves in the ways that we want to. So that has challenged that patriarchal system that often comes through religion to actually say that we want to own our bodies and we want to decide how it is that we want to live yeah. and how we want to move about. So yeah. from that perspective, the answer would be your spouse does not control your body, you control your body and you decide what you want to do with it. So and that is how it should be for as long as you are alive. Yeah. Oh, with, with, within, uh, I'd say your age group, because I'm Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of, of, would you let your wife visit your parents? I've as a cleavage as Hambelangama two centimeter or do Well, I mean of course it, these things are very contextual in a sense that I mean, would I let her firstly I do not believe that I would be in a position to control how it is that she dresses. Mm -hmm. Right, because that would already be an imposition of my belief of how I see things onto her. Right. So I think uh, in that case I would allow my wife or my partner to go about the world in ways that they want to, understanding that it's their freedom and their right to express themselves in ways that they want to. I'm glad that you're saying that because what I really would like you to speak on as well, just touch on, I think you've touched on it already, but I just want you to kind of unpack and uh, develop further on that. Uh, a lot of people will talk about uh, having a 50-50 type mm -hmm. of relationship, but mm -hmm. don't you think that it, in a relationship you need <clears throat> someone to, t uh, to set the tone rather? And tell me, when do you think perhaps when a, a relationship, like in a relationship, and somebody becomes advisory and abusive, mm -hmm. what are the red flags to look for when it comes to that context? Yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I do understand what you mean by, you know, sort of 50-50 type of relationship that we both have a voice in this relationship. We both have a say on how we fix things and on how we go about our lives. Of course, that would mostly be based on having shared values, you know, uh, seeing the world in the same ways and so forth. 
But of course, we also have to have an understanding of the fact that a lot of, a lot of times, even in that 50-50 relationship, you often find that men have power over it and that it's often easy for them to tell the wife how it is that they should live, what they expect from them. For instance, that when a man gets home, there should already be food, yes. that they should be the ones that do the homework, yeah. and that they can just sit around and play, you know, and watch I'm, soccer during mm. the weekend and so forth. Whereas uh, there might be women, contemporary in contemporary society, that mm -hmm. might actually be against that sort of thing. So in an older society, that may not have been seen as abuse, but now no. it may come across as that. So there has to be a way in which those two partners can sit together and talk about that. Yeah, perhaps wow. if you look at it uh, in terms of uh, our history, where a man mm. used to hunt and get food, but mm -hmm. now... Uh, if you look at it, women and men both hunt. We're yeah. both tired, we yeah. come back from work, so yeah. now who must assume the role? <coughs> exactly. Which role do they exactly. assume? And, yeah. Exactly, which is actually very, just a short note, which is actually very interesting because you sort of see a patriarchal society in a sense that when you look at the best chefs in society, they're always men. Absolutely. And yet women are the ones that are always cooking at home. You know? Wow. So you see how men <laughs> just control the world. True, true. Mm -hmm. No, but I think I would like to, uh, I, I just want your, your, your Otung Valelela, uh, like in terms of what would you say, especially to men who still think, and, and I'm saying men, mm -hmm. because uh, of, we're dealing with this GBV thing. Mm -hmm. like, what would you say to men who still think that uh, women um, they are, are their possession? Mm -hmm. right. I mean, a lot of men, you know, because, I mean, we, we, we grow up that way, we sit in our families, so it's something that, you know, we're all dealing with. There, there are no, I suppose, bad men out there, you know, like I think we all as men, you know, it's sort of in the same boat because we're having to rethink these sort of things. But I would say that one has to be aware of the fact that, you know, it's how you grew up and that you need to be comfortable with allowing yourself to be challenged and to change your perspective and not think of it as you are being offended. No, it's just a different world that has been created and you just have to have the patience with yourself to be able to adapt to the understanding that you know, all people are equal, including women. Wow. I thank you, Dad. Didn't you? you know, it's, it's never enough time. We'll kill into this. So, this has been Vanishing Cultures. Thank you so much for, for giving us your time. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Guys, HGPV Seras, I think you guys have noticed now, even the president of Kulumanga. Guys, I see Peg and Leon. I see Peg and Leon so much. Also, I think communication is important between you and your spouse more than anything. Absolutely. And just touch on what you just said. Remember, we always assume that women are the ones that are purely being abused. There mm. are men out there who actually are in the same boat as women who are being abused. So let's also not forget them too. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, guys. This is Vanishing Cultures for this year. Shams and his pure. Okay. I mean, it's on now. It's on now. You'll see us next week, Thursday. I want to thank a couple of people who've made this happen, even after the sauna. Bro Paul, Mzamo, Ernest, Elena, I thank you guys so much. And I thank all the guests that came today. And guys, Lalilan, if you want to talk more about the, uh, about the, the sauna, XN on the show, like hi. Anything else before I close? No, one of the people signing out. Leave it just perfect. Look, it? Mouth, come kill us, bruh. Thank you very much. And that <laughs>
make massive moves. The Bible is human and divine. It's important for us to remember. And I'm part of God's story. Yeah, my mama, mama, hey. God is healing you. God says what he means, and he means what he says. God is good. I am very grateful to God. I am healed. Amen. Make massive moves with Starset. Time to sign, 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 time to sign